Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're going to talk about Speechy. Speechy is basically an all-in-one UI with high quality filters like a compressor, noise filter, a noise gate, and even a full EQ suite. So you can make that silky smooth voice of yours sound even better. There are also a lot of presets already included and you can even make your own. I've thoroughly enjoyed playing with it and I now use it on a daily basis, be it on Twitch, YouTube or podcasts. Yeah, podcasts. Now, Speechy is a paid plugin. However, there is a trial version in which you can basically try it out for a full 15 days with no restrictions at all. So basically, you can try it out to your heart's content and then decide for yourself if you want to buy it. Let's jump straight into OBS and I'll show you how to use it. Right, so first off, I'm going to assume that you know your way around OBS. If not, please let me know in the comment section and I'll make a video going around some of the basics. Also, you will need to have Speechy downloaded and you'll find a link to the download page in the description box below. Cool? Cool. Right click your mic input and open the filter section in OBS. Click the plus icon and select VST plugin. Name it whatever you want and select Speechy as the plugin you want to use. If you've downloaded it, it should show up and you can click the open plugin interface button. Now there's a lot going on here, so let's break the section sound to make it easier. Section 1 is going to be your playback, input and output gain, compressor and some enhancements to the overall sound. Since I talk fairly quietly, I have to up the input gain and the output gain a little. And generally speaking, you want the input to be in the dotted area around minus 20 dB. Although I do have some heavy reactions sometimes, so let's activate the compressor too, which ensures that the audio levels are more evened out. There are two compressor modes here, transparent and aggressive. Aggressive should be used when there are some really loud noises going on. Transparent can be used when you have a more chill voice. Make sure you stay in between the 8 to 16 range and you don't over compress your voice. Section 2. Tone Boosters The tone boosters are a really nice addition, especially if you're not super experienced with equalizers, etc. Right off the bat, you can achieve an amazing sound with just these settings. Sexy Low End is the rumble from down under, a really meaty boost to, well, your low end. Mid-range drive is where a lot of the clarity lies. Have it too low and you'll sound muddy, have it too high and your voice will sound fairly harsh. Try to find the sweet spot. You can do this by recording a part and have it play back in a loop. Set mode to best, press the record button, speak a few lines and then play back. Adjusting as you go will give you a better idea how things will sound. Oh coffee machine, my coffee machine, you finally finished my drink. For every morning you brew me one, I place my mug in the kitchen sink. Oh coffee machine, my coffee machine, you finally finished my drink. For every morning you brew me one, I place my mug in the kitchen sink. You finally finished my drink. For every morning you brew me one, I place my mug in the kitchen sink. Lastly, vocal air. Literally breathe some life into your sound and widens it a little. If you don't hear anything, open the advanced audio properties of your source and enable monitoring. Just don't forget to turn it off before you start streaming again. Section number three would be what I call the voice filters. We get a noise gate, a de-esser, noise reducer, and a plosive reducer. The noise gate makes sure that only sounds that are loud enough will come through. This eliminates tiny breaths and other noises. The de-esser does what it says, it reduces the harshness of your S, which can be quite important. The denoiser makes sure that the background noise your microphone picks up is reduced, so only your sexy voice comes through. The plosives make sure that the P's and B's don't distort your sound, since whenever you speak a P or B, a lot of air comes through and it can be quite a deal breaker when it comes to recording. Make sure you look at the indicator to see where the speed spot is without thinning out your sound. It is also helpful to have your mic at around 15 centimeters from your face hole, so you don't have to tweak these a lot. Another helpful tool is a pop filter for your mic, however not everyone likes this, so the deplosive is a great addition. Make sure you don't overdo any of these since they are directly responsible for the quality of your output. Now, we could be done here and have an amazing sound already, but what if we need to tweak some more? Make it sound wider, more alive? We need to use the advanced section then. We can access the advanced section by clicking on the word advanced on the bottom side of the grill. There are two subsections here, pre-EQ, which is put before the compressor, and a post EQ, which is put after the compressor. There's also a spread feature, which allows you to artificially widen a stereo track. Simply put, a pre EQ shapes your voice, and the post EQ shapes the overall sound. 
Now this is very voice dependent and should be dialed into your needs. As all mics, voices and rooms are different. Generally, for deeper voices, it suits to have a little more high-end or middle to cut through some of the low-end and vice versa. Ugly frequency control is where set frequencies can be handled. Every slider has a set of three frequencies, which can be selected and dealt with accordingly. Again, these have to be played around with, but you can easily find the frequencies that are problematic by setting the slider to full and selecting the preset frequencies one after the other, then backing down the slider once you've found set frequency. Now here's a non-scientific breakdown of the frequencies. Mud is muddy low end or a muffled sound. Box is lower mid-range ugliness. Room, higher mid-range that flattens your sound if you put it too high. Harsh, high end, have this too high and your voice sounds nasally and has none of that sexy bottom end we previously added. Waking up with no cup of coffee, ask not what the future may bring. Without the energy, I don't know whether sorrow shall reign or happiness ring. Waking up with no cup of coffee, ask not what the future may bring. Without the energy, I don't know whether sorrow shall reign or happiness ring. Waking up with no cup of coffee, ask not what the future may bring. Without the energy, I don't know whether sorrow shall reign or happiness ring. If you're happy with your sound, click on the name field to save your preset, then click on new and give it a name. Now it's ready to use in whatever software you want to use it. Needless to say, you can use this in about any software that can handle VST plugins like Audacity, Reaper, Fruity Loops, etc. Since OBS is so great with VST plugins, let me also give you some troubleshooting tips. Let me just emphasize that this is an OBS issue. This has nothing to do with Speechy. Number one, if OBS crashes while trying to set up Speechy, delete all VST extensions from Speechy then reinstall Speechy and see if that works. If it doesn't, delete all extensions but the 64-bit speechy.dll file and move it to the OBS plugin folder manually. OBS Studio should be saved in the programs folder of your main drive. If not, please locate it first. It is important that Speechy can't be found in other VST folders in this case, or OBS will crash. So make sure you don't have any folders with random VSC plugins. Alternatively, you can install Speechy normally and have it run off a different program like Reaper, Pro Tools, Ableton Live, etc. And as a finishing touch, here is a voice line without Speechy and a voice line with Speechy. Way too much coffee. But if it weren't for the coffee, I'd have no identifiable personality whatsoever. Way too much coffee. But if it weren't for the coffee, I'd have no identifiable personality whatsoever. Alright, that's it for my side. Smash that like button, subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on future videos. And I also stream on Twitch every Wednesday, Thursday and Saturday if my internet doesn't, you know, do things. So uh, yeah, come and chat with us. Also make sure to follow me on Twitter for extra spicy tweets and I'll catch you next week. Later. Two weeks ago, I did a poll on Twitter asking what I should do for Halloween. And uh, most of you said, play a scary game. And the scariest game I can think of is Outlast, so...